This week we're going to shift our focus to the executive branch. So I need you to, when you're reading your constitution at night before you go to bed, I need you to do an extra special focus on Article 2 uh, of the Constitution. Uh, now this is going to be one that I'm going to need you to head over to my YouTube page uh, and go down the playlist uh, on this one because there are lots of cool videos uh, in here that uh, explain some of these things. You see some of these things. Um, and, uh, and and I don't want you to miss out on those uh, if you're watching this at home. So uh, you want to make sure you head over to that YouTube playlist uh, to fill in the videos as we um, when we get finished here. Um, Article 2, Section 1 starts out by saying the executive power uh, shall be vested in the President uh, of the United States of America. Uh, now that, um, what the idea uh, behind this is, the executive power is the power to execute laws. Uh, and so that's what we say that the executive branch does. Now you're going to see uh, as we do this, the executive branch is about way more than the President. But usually when people think about it, that's what they think about, is it being the President of the United States. But there are thousands of people uh, that work for the President with the sole purpose of helping him carry out the laws that Congress has passed. Um, the uh, job requirements to be President of the United States, um, there aren't many. Um, we, remember we talked about the representatives being 25, senators being 30. Uh, the oldest um, age in the Constitution is 35, and that is for President of the United States. Now, today we don't think of 35 uh, as being very old, uh, and most of the time uh, presidents are much older uh, than 35. Uh, but back then, uh, that would have been um, fairly long, uh, fairly far along in life expectancy uh, to uh, to be 35 years old. Um, as I'm recording this right now, we've got a presidential election going on between two men who have more than doubled uh, that uh, age requirement. And so uh, it's much more common to have a president uh, who's at least late 40s, early 50s. Uh, like I said, uh, the last several candidates have been uh, actually in their 70s. Uh, you do have to be a natural born citizen of the United States. So you can't become an American citizen later in life. Uh, and then run for the presidency. Uh, you have to have been born an American. You don't have to be born um, on American soil. Uh, we've had presidents who uh, you know, were born uh, in on army bases and things like that, but you do have to be an American citizen uh, at the time of your birth to do that. Uh, president's going to make about $400,000 a year in salary. Uh, for a lot of these guys, um, that's not a ton of money. Uh, you know, President Trump, uh, as in 2020, donates uh, his entire salary. He's a very wealthy individual. Uh, and a lot of our presidents have been uh, before. Um, but there's a lot that comes out of uh, that $400,000 uh, as well. And we'll talk about that uh, when we look at uh, kind of the nuts and the bolts of the presidency later. Uh, they are not allowed to uh, receive gifts just like congressmen. Uh, we talked about in Article 1, they can't receive gifts um, monetary gifts, things like that from foreign powers. Um, and so basically it's just wanting to keep things on the up and up. Uh, we don't want it looking like our president could be bribed uh, or bought in any way. Uh, when the president takes office, um, he says just this short little phrase. Uh, usually he is sworn in by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. So in January, uh, Chief Justice Roberts will administer the oath of office either to the, for the second time to Donald Trump which, yes, you do do it twice, uh, or to for the first time to Joe Biden. Uh, it says, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Uh, and so basically, that's, um, that's the job. That's what you're doing. Uh, now, every president since George Washington uh, has added uh, a couple of other words to the end of that, so help me God. Uh, and so uh, that is an unofficial part uh, of the presidential oath of office, um, not in the Constitution, but it's one that uh, has been added um, by the 45 men who have uh, been president uh, of the United States. Not everybody has been sworn in by a chief justice. 
Um, Calvin Coolidge uh, was actually sworn in by his father. Uh, Lyndon Johnson uh, was sworn in on Air Force One once President Kennedy was assassinated uh, by a female federal judge that he had helped get appointed in Texas. Uh, but if there's an inauguration ceremony in January, uh, it's going to be the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Um, Article 2, Section 2 talks about what powers the President has. The very first one listed there is that the President is Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. military. Uh, founding Fathers wanted a civilian uh, in charge of the military. Uh, you can't um, have a commission uh, in the military and be president at the same time. You have to be a civilian. Uh, now, we have had presidents, of course, who have served in the military, uh, some very highly, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, Dwight Eisenhower, uh, but you don't have to have served in the military to be president, um, and uh, you can't serve in the military at the same time uh, that you are president uh, of the United States. Uh, but that's, that's a big one, right? So we know Congress is the branch of our government that declares war, but the president... Uh, is in charge of commanding the troops. Uh, now, that would have been a very natural job uh, for a guy like a George Washington, uh, somebody like that, somebody with limited uh, military experience, uh, has some catching up to do. Uh, you know, you look at uh, the example of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, when he becomes president, the Civil War started, uh, and he'd been in the Illinois State Militia, didn't have a whole lot of military experience. Uh, and so the first thing he did, headed over to the Library of Congress, Checked out all the books he could on warfare uh, and educated himself that way. Uh, presidential pardons uh, are also a power that the president has. Uh, this is one that usually we don't notice um, because a lot of times they'll do it right at the end of their terms. Uh, and so uh, like the day before a new person is taking over for uh, the presidency, the president will pardon people. Uh, sometimes these are uh, friends. Uh, of the president or you know friends of friends of the president people that uh, uh, have asked the president to uh, to do that for them um, probably the most famous presidential pardon is Gerald Ford uh, and in his um, early in his pres term as president after taking over when Nixon resigned he pardoned uh, Richard Nixon uh, and a lot of people say that cost him his own term uh, as president of the United States uh, but once the pres president pardons you, you're pardoned. Uh, you can't uh, have federal charges brought against you. Uh, they also can make treaties uh, with other countries. Uh, now, we know that the approval of treaties has to happen in the Senate. But the president makes them and then goes to get uh, approval from the Senate. Most of the time that happens uh, very famously in World War I. It does not. Uh, our president, Woodrow Wilson, helped negotiate the Treaty of Versailles. Uh, but when he came back and wanted the Senate to approve it, they said no. Um, he, uh, the president can also appoint Supreme Court justices, uh, again, with the consent of the Senate. So that means that uh, the Senate does get uh, to uh, approve the nomination. Uh, as I'm sitting here recording this, this has just happened yesterday. Uh, president Trump uh, nominated uh, a, a lady from our own state of Indiana uh, to um, fill in for the seat of the recently deceased Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, and I got to admit to you, I can't remember her name, but her initials have been all over the news. It is ACB. Um, but I do know she's from Indiana. She was a professor at uh, Notre Dame. Um, and so this is. Um, so if uh, she gets confirmed to the Supreme Court, I promise I'll learn her name. She'll be a very, very important um, part of that body. But that's uh, one of the things President Trump gets to do uh, is appoint uh, someone there. That's been a little controversial uh, because um, there was a death at the end of President Obama's term uh, and the Senate did not take up um, the nomination process. But... President Obama is a Democrat, and the Senate was controlled by the Republican Party. Um, this president is a Republican, uh, and so the Senate is controlled by the Republicans. Uh, and so they've decided uh, to uh, go ahead and consider the nomination. Uh, Article 2, Section 3 uh, talks about uh, what we know today as the State of the Union Address. 
just says basically uh, from time to time uh, the president should report to Congress on the State of the Union. Uh, now today that is a big speech. It usually happens in the end of January 1st of February of every year. Uh, a lot of pomp and circumstance. Got a great video for you talking about all the pomp and circumstance around the State of the Union. Um, it wasn't always that way. Uh, George Washington and John Adams gave speeches to Congress. Thomas Jefferson, though, our third president, didn't like to give speeches, and so he wrote a letter uh, and had it read out in Congress. Uh, and that tradition continued up until Woodrow Wilson uh, in the late 19 teens. And so ever since then, uh, it's a television event. Uh, and so uh, that's a big deal. Everybody in Washington comes together um, to see the State of the Union. So um, very big deal now. The uh, president can also uh, convene special sessions of Congress, so he can call them into um, into session uh, if they're out of session. Uh, I don't remember this happening. Um, I'm sure it has in the past, um, but not real sure why the president would do this unless there's some kind of national emergency, uh, because when Congress isn't in session, uh, he actually gets to do some things without them having to say yes. Uh, so if I was president, I don't think I would uh, call them into uh, session very often. Uh, he also receives ambassadors and ministers uh, from other countries. Uh, and so that is what we talked about yesterday with the role of, or, or uh, last time, the role of being a head of state. Uh, and so uh, that is very much being the kind of the public face uh, of the United States of America. Uh, and that's another duty our president There are three brands. Um, and so uh, the last section of Article 2, remember each one of these is going to get shorter uh, as we go through the Constitution, uh, is Section 4, and it talks about impeachment. Um, now, we know that Congress has the power of impeachment, and they can impeach uh, judges, they can impeach senators. We told you one of those stories uh, in the legislative branch. Uh, but the president can also be impeached uh, for treason for bribery or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, and so um, that has been, the high crimes and misdemeanors uh, has been the basis of all three of our presidential impeachments in history. The fellow that you see on the left is Andrew Johnson. He's got took over when President Lincoln was assassinated. Uh, and his involved a, um, a an issue with wanting to replace some of the officials in his cabinet. We'll talk about the president cabinet a little later in the week. Uh, Bill Clinton, uh, there in the middle. Remember that when uh, when I was your age back in high school. Uh, and Bill Clinton was impeached for um, basically perjury. Uh, he lied about uh, an inappropriate relationship he had with a uh, White House intern. Um, he's very popular. Actually, the day he was impeached was the most popular day of his presidency. Uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, Andrew Johnson actually survived impeachment by just one vote. Um, so you can be impeached but not get kicked out of office. We've never had a president impeached and then kicked out of office by the Senate. Uh, president Trump was impeached early in, or I guess late in 2019. The trial was early 2020 um, for, um, oh, geez, just the Democrats said he was doing bad stuff. He said he wasn't doing bad stuff. The Democrats impeached him. Um, stuff with, I mean, really, it, there's just a laundry list. But um, but it was never going to go anywhere because <laughs> the Democrats control the House, which, of course, can impeach him. But he went on trial in the Senate, which is controlled by Republicans. Uh, and so um, he's not going to be convicted. But uh, he's still... Uh, is one of three presidents to be impeached, which I can't imagine sits very well with him. Um, but then again, they didn't get him out of office, so maybe he just sits back and laughs. Um, and so that is uh, what we see with uh, the presidency. And so what I want to encourage you to do uh, is, like I said, go to my YouTube page. Uh, it's linked there for you, uh, and it will give you some of these videos uh, that are showing in between. Uh, that really dig into some different powers of the presidency, uh, like the executive order, which isn't in the Constitution, uh, but is a, uh, a power that our president um, uses quite often, uh, especially when his party is not in control of Congress. So be sure to head over and check that out.